good. Hey, Black Hills, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, this week, uh, we have on Pastor Dave from Fountain Springs. Dave, David, you don't even have to call me Pastor. Pastor Dave. <laughs> Pastor Dave today. There you go. And we have a good buddy of mine, goes to Fountain Springs, Andrew McGlashan. Uh Just for, you know, I mean, why not? <laughs> How long has uh, Fountain Springs been in the Black Hills? Since 1982, technically. Really? But, yeah. Wow. Uh, but we have a pretty dark history as a church. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get into that, you get into, uh, I mean, I can tell you the history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, man. Come on, man. <laughs> no. Hey, no, but no questions off, off limits here. Uh, no, uh, in 1982, the church started, but the church started as a... And we're, and we're very public about this, by the way. Okay. Um, no, we started as a church split. I wasn't here, so I'm going to tell you history. I was told, uh, but we no, we we started in 1982 as a church split, and uh, it was a it was a pretty uh, angry group of people yeah. that started our church, and for years existed like that. There are people who uh, who aren't big fans of church or even God because of the behavior of our church mm. those early years. Um, the the term dead church uh it gets used a lot uh, a church there can be people there but they'll call it a dead church um our church functioned like a dead church for uh many years yeah. so there's your dark history of our church <laughs> <laughs> almost it's... closed actually like, like uh, 1999 yeah almost completely closed wow. we would not be having this conversation i'm not a religious guy but i grew up catholic uh hold the whole mexican thing yeah. i mean it is like Everybody was like, oh, you're just, it is like tradition in our Mexican family, everybody. Like if you're not Catholic, it's kind of, yeah, you get, you get a lot of crap from your grandparents and stuff okay. like that. What about you? You, um, Actually, yeah. Um, I got brought to a lot of Catholic churches when I was younger. My grandma, my aunt, um, my mom started out, I think with a little bit of Catholic and she's trying to kind of try other things throughout the years there. And then she just eventually stopped. I didn't like it at all. It, yeah. it drove me away yeah. from like religion and stuff like that because it was so boring. And I was like, oh. and I didn't get anything no. on it. All I got was Jesus thrown down my throat for mm -hmm. like an hour and a half of just boring. And one thing I do have to say about Fountain Springs, I went there a couple times. Did any what? lightning come down at all? I, you good? I you, thought it was. Actually. How did you not get a hold of me when you were coming wow. to church? <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? No, I did. That's who I went what? with you. I went to church with you like that, was that like last year three almost? Times. That was actually like twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. Oh, right okay, yeah, I, I remember was going, that. I was going through a really hard time, okay. yeah. and I was I like I lost my vision already at this time. I went blind for like four years, really bad. Dude, and Andrew picked me up, hmm. and we go there, and I was like, "This is this is already." Right. He's like, "Just calm down." He's like, "Just go and check it out." Okay, and then when you're done, let me know what you think. And I went. And it wasn't like an hour of of getting like Jesus shoved down my throat. It was actually teaching me like how to be a better person. Yeah. Like because Jesus already did his thing. And now it's up to me being a human, like mm -hmm. how to be a good person and how to do this. And I was like, whoa, this is actually like affirmation and morale. I was like, this is awesome. I was like, this is a little different. It's It's more like positive energy rather than, I don't know, just like the traditional church that everybody when they hear the word religion that's what comes to mind oh uh, yeah and now it's completely different like i even talk to people i'm like dude no it's it's completely different like i have no judgment on people that say they go to fountain springs it's completely different that was my general thing before going to uh fountain springs or was that that stigma that mm -hmm. that church was judgy all those things they're gonna shove these things down my throat and yeah when i met my uh girlfriend who's now my wife um we were hanging out and her daughter comes up to me and kiara comes up to me and says hey uh do you go to church and i'm like um no and she's like well you're gonna come with us and i'm like well, i can't tell a nine-year-old i'm not going to church with her so i guess i'm going to church so you know and i went with all these predispositions like this is going to be horrible and everything and it, every single time so the first time it just broke the mold it's like is he talking to me right now like why is everything have to do with what i'm going through or yeah. what i'm trying to figure out right now and then so i was like okay and i left and then 
I came back and it just kept happening over and over and over again. And I was like, okay, like once could I could give it up to like, oh, it was just some, you know, thing that just happened. It was a coincidence, but yeah. it was like over and over and over and over again. I was like, okay, something's going on here. So, you know, when you start diving deeper into it and realizing that there's way more substance to it, it's not about what the church was trying to get from you. It was what they were trying to give to you is way different. Here's what I'll tell you. If you want to find someone judgmental in our church, you will find them. If you want to find a hypocrite in our church, you will find you will find them if you go look for them. Mm -hmm. I'll just tell you right now, I'm not perfect and got many mistakes as a pastor that I've I'm like I've said it this is one way is right and I've done it not that way. So if you want to find all of the imperfections and the brokenness in our church, mm -hmm. you will find it. But I can tell you uh, our heart. I can tell you our agenda. I can tell you like what we're trying to do. Um, but I promise you, it's like any of us. If I go to a restaurant and I am looking for a moment for them to mess up my whatever it is, I probably will find it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I only have to go probably a couple times. Maybe the first time I get it all. The same things with church. And, and I get it. Not all churches are healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, our church is not perfect. Uh, but our, our agenda, honestly, is to help you know who Jesus is, because I don't need to force you into any decision making about Jesus. I just think you knowing who Jesus is, uh, I trust God enough to do what needs to be done, if that makes sense. And so uh, that's the agenda. But I, I'll tell you, I'm always first to say, if you if you want, you'll find jacked up yeah. if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> What you got? <laughs> oh, I, see, I'm not into religion, but Me I think it's completely fine if you have your own, uh, like, whatever it is you believe in. Like, if you are religious, that's awesome. And if you're not, whatever. It's, you know, like, I have no judgment on any anybody, like, what cool. they believe in. And it's me and Andrew have been really good friends for a very long time, even though we have different outlooks and our differences we still you know like we we do like to talk about it once in a while because mm -hmm. then we get in these little itty bitty mini debates and stuff like that but it's kind of nice because we're both not stuck like in one way and yeah. people are probably wondering why we're not debating atheism versus religion and uh, stuff like that is because uh it i think debates are stupid actually i think it's it just depends on who studied more about one thing i don't like the appeal to power thing where I know more than you. I'm more academically, yep. you know, you don't, it just doesn't work for me. Um, I don't think it works for most people really because mm -hmm. somebody's always going to be smarter than the other person. Somebody's always going to have some different experiences than the other person. And I think just to start with that as your starting piece that I know more than you, so therefore I am right, <laughs> is always, always a bad way to start, start it, you I, know? I tell, I tell people like that are, loud mouths and stuff that just like no man you should do this this is how your show should be you should you should be a debater and i'm like get your own show dude there is plenty <laughs> of internet out there for the rest of the world yeah. mm -hmm. like i do not own the internet go for it yep. get your own equipment do your own thing i think sometimes not in here and i don't i'm not i'm not i don't know you well enough to know i think some the downfalls of of where religion can go it can get controlling yeah where, where it's the word control it's it's um here's what i think is right dot 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 whether i've got proof of it or not but the downfall is when i try to control you into that belief mm -hmm. um control is necessary well okay i've got a one and a half year old in our house there we have a gate that blocks the stairs the going downstairs as he's learned to get super mobile and go all around so in essence i'm controlling where he can go and he can't go but he's one all right yeah um so I think when you're talking about someone who can make their own decisions and choices, uh, control is a bad direction mm -hmm. to go, especially when it, when, when I'm going to tell you as a pastor that I just want you to experience a relationship with God control can't even be a part of that conversation. Yeah. So, uh, we try to not be, um, controlling in our language and, and, and that's not the agenda, but I get, I, I think I, I've been there where I grew up thinking, and not that someone directly taught me this, because I'm a, I'm a pastor's kid. Oh, um, okay. I'm a fourth generation pastor in a row. So I grew up in an environment that was, at least it was subtly put onto me, 
you do this, you don't do that, make sure you stay on the right line. And it was a bit of a legalistic control. Yeah. And it made them feel better about me. One, because I wasn't in jail and I wasn't dot, 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 whatever it was. And it wasn't relationship, it was control. And I think most of us, even a pastor's kid, push away from that at yeah. some point. We're like, no way. Even if it, you call it rebellion, even if it's like, I'm anti everything you are because yeah. I'm sick and tired of that control. Yeah, you always hear about, like, uh, that's why I was, I'm sure you have stories because they always say, like, the pastor's kid always, like, rebels the hardest because they they have all those things kind of pushed on them a little bit, you know? It's yeah. true, man. Uh, yeah. My dad was a cop. Uh, <laughs> so let me, since this has been recorded, I will say that my parents did a fantastic job parenting. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out mom and dad. Mom. Mom, uh, mom and dad, if you're watching. Um, and, and I mean, I, I, I mean that they were really good, they were good. but you're, but you're still, uh, I would imagine, um, any kind of leader, uh, things get projected onto that, to their kids. Yeah. Uh, and so, and same if you're, if you're a parent is a, is a cop you just things get projected onto you not necessarily from the parents but from outside forces yeah the one thing i was when we were talking earlier i said the i really like that the churches pushes um small groups yeah and you know a lot of churches actually don't do that you know they don't push small groups as much as what do you mean uh, small groups small groups so um they we push the church uh tries to get you to you know try to pair up with somebody you know, uh, uh, different groups. It doesn't. They can be, you know, young. Um, they can talk about. Uh, they could be people that are in business. They could be all sorts of different things. But basically, where you get together and you you do a, either a Bible study. Um, sometimes the church actually leads them, like usually like once or twice a year. Outside of the church. Outside or, of yeah. the church. Oh, okay. So, so you it's... guys, yeah, it's kind of like getting kind of like life partners. Yeah. You know? Okay. Cool. And it's, I think that was a big thing for when I first started the church and we got into the life groups and we were, um, we were going through, um, getting ready to get married. So, um, we were, we joined a young couple's life group and that, that opened up a lot of different things. Cause when we were struggling with little things, we figured out really quickly that everybody was struggling with the exact same things because we were talking there, they would be like, people would open up in those groups. Well, struggling, when, struggling with things in a relationship. Yeah. Relationship oh, okay. stuff. And, um, it just helped that you knew other people were going through the same things and you basically talked it out and worked it out together and it made everything better. Like, uh, there was just so much, so many times when me and Kim would go and we were, we were struggling f thinking we were going through this alone and how we're going to figure it out. And then you go to life group and people are saying they're dealing with the exact same thing. Yeah. Or even talking about religion aside, just having that, that group to talk to and, you know, communicate that stuff with and know that you're not alone and talk that stuff out yeah. was tremendous. Millennials yeah. are yeah, like 35% less coming to churches uh, than the older groups and stuff like that. They're using, they're losing connection. Uh, mm -hmm. They're getting spiritual, not religious because of the stigma that goes with religion. Now they're getting spiritual and holistic and stuff like that. Like, uh, like, gems and all that stupid yeah whatever Sorry. It's so, you're fine talk however you Sorry. want to talk i mean yeah. trust me my <laughs> kids are learning words i had never learned before uh i uh, part of the part of the part of those numbers aren't actually fully accurate so when they when they do surveys uh there are people leaving what they call like mainline mainstream denominations mm -hmm. um they are leaving those and finding some many of them are finding churches that aren't trying to just get them to be a part of a religion yeah and so but in the number the way the surveys and the numbers indicate is they left they left the church mm -hmm. well they left the mainline denominational thing and, and and that doesn't track in the survey but no i think people are still hungry in my opinion and this is my opinion i think people are are born with and hungry for a relationship with god uh, but you, many people seek that out in, I mean, there's a long list of ways you can begin to seek yeah. that out and try to go to, you know, that route. Well, as a pastor, that's a good outlook, <laughs> but honestly, it's like, it is because of the religious stigma for and, sure. And they are like, I mean, there's a lot of people I know that are like spiritual. Yeah. 
<laughs> Even my daughter is like, she got a crystal thing the other day. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> She uh, she discovered uh, Ernie November's. She loves like she gets like sweatshirts and like she loves like tie dye and stuff like that. She's always has. So when she discovered Ernie November's, it was like, oh, you, you we wait, have this. Why did nobody tell me about? You wait this? till the first time she does mushrooms or something, and then she's gonna no, be like, is that what she, this is about? She better, <laughs> she better not. <laughs> I just had an out of body experience, bro. <laughs> you're like this. No, no. I said I said you're allowed to go there as long as the only thing that's not allowed in our apartment is hallucinogens I marijuana <laughs> the, just just the smell uh, hold up before we continue we'd like to thank pastor dave from fountain springs church for joining us on the podcast today if you're enjoying what we do here at black hills podcast you can help keep us rolling by donating to the podcast with the links provided below or if you're a local business in the black hills area you can sponsor an episode by contacting us by email thanks for listening keep it local keep it black hills let's continue <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the coffee mug. You're man. welcome, man. It's awesome. What kind of things do you do outside of the church for the community? Our heart is that we would be a church that's not not just exists inside of our community, but that we're for the community mm-hmm. and and we're fully aware. I mean, I totally get it that that every not everyone is totally cool with church. Not everyone's totally cool with our church. There's all there's a lot of preconceived yeah, stuff. Yeah. I get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Very political. So. Uh, one one of the things we, we're trying to do is look at what is truly needed in the community, not duplicate stuff, not like also oh, and so is doing this. Um, one example was transportation is a major issue where mm-hmm. we live. Our, our bus system isn't perfect. Uh, there there's there's literally uh, times that it doesn't run, and you're like, but I still got to go to work or I still got to get picked up, whatever. Yeah. Uh, also, winter we don't have the greatest walking environment. Oh yeah. January February. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, we live in a place, it's not like San Diego, where it's like, oh, I'll just hop on a bike or, or a taxi or whatever. So we started what we called a car ministry that was basically we tried to re- repair people's vehicles or even in some cases give vehicles away. Someone would donate a vehicle. Here you go. Here's your vehicle. For like, real? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> that's 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 really cool, man. So it's, we, like, I mean, it's a major need. I mean, yeah. it, it's just a – in fact – uh, my wife, who's in charge of helping us really know the needs of the community, she's like, this is one of the top three needs in our community. Yeah. So we started small. Our facilities guy at the time, the guy who kind of took care of all the stuff, uh, was into cars and helped get it launched and rolling. And we began to do oil changes and some basic stuff. But then that kind of progressed. Eventually, some guy uh, lent us his shop in the evenings, started using that. Then another guy eventually said, you can have this space for really cheap. So we even started our own shop. And now Shift is the name of it, is its own 501c3 here in town and runs and operates on its own. We support it, but others support it too. And it's designed to meet you in your, most of us would say, other than the place that we live, the most important thing in our life is a vehicle to get from A to B. Yeah. If that breaks down, a lot of things break down. Oh, yeah. And so we as a church said, we want to be all over that. We want to help meet that need. So we launched that. It's rolling, and now it's its own thing, which is pretty cool. So now we're in, um, there's another problem in our community, is uh, foster care. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's, uh, it's, it's, we have... The last numbers I heard, so I'm not generalized here, over 300 kids in our own city wow. that do not have a home. And so we as a church said, okay, how do, how do we help with this? So we're in the process of figuring out how to help that because it's multifaceted. It's um, things like, well, maybe you become a foster parent, but that's not for everybody. Yeah. So how do you support a foster parent? Yeah. How do you create environments that maybe can put several kids in the same environment. So as a church right now, that's what we're trying to help be a solution to, because I know the church has been a problem for a lot of people for centuries. And uh, it is our heartbeat. I think Jesus taught this, that we should care for the widows and the orphans and and really just frankly, anyone in, in need. And so, although uh, we can't do it all, we can do something. And that's like what we're, that's basically what we're trying to do is identify needs and be a part of it. Uh, we started something called uh, Love Week uh, every week. So churches go on missions trips. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, where you uh, you go somewhere, right? And like, let's say I go to uh, where am I going? Africa. Okay, you okay. you're gonna go to Africa, and you're gonna help some people there uh, build some homes. That's not a bad thing. That's good. Yeah. That's good. 
Uh, the problem is a lot of us in churches will pay attention to only Africa and, yeah. and disregard Rapid City or the Black Hills because we got everything going overseas because that's expensive and all that. So we started our own what's called a mission strip to our own city. Yeah. And so every cool. year, except in COVID, I won't, I'll point that out, except in COVID, we didn't get to do it this year. No. Yeah. Um, you guys still did a lot of stuff during yeah. COVID, though. Yeah, yeah we did. We yeah. did. All, you know, actually, uh, but so we do every year that. Uh, but no, we actually, during COVID, we became a distribution center. Uh, there are people who couldn't get out of their homes or, or shouldn't get out of their homes. So we became a distribution system. So we, we had people, volunteers, the food and, and goods would go to the church, and we had volunteers pick it up and take it to home. Cool. So that's a good pe idea. People matter, man. And that's good. We can disagree on a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm sure, sure a lot of people out there listening, you can find anything wrong with any company. Like, I mean, any business, me, the church, whatever. Do you want to look at everything from a negative aspect? It's like you can do that. There's, that's the easiest thing in life to do. And even to get listeners and stuff like that, people do that. To be negative, to get listeners. It's like, why not try and do something positive and just hear from the community yeah. rather than make everything negative? For yeah. sure. Yeah. I remember, yeah, we did a love week. Um, and that was a blast. We just went around. The, we pick all sorts of different things depending on, like, who you who you're with. Like, because we had our whole family, so we had, you know, I think my son was like six at the time. Yeah. So he was really young, so we could only do certain activities because I have some stuff from like hard labor stuff that needs to get done to, um, hey, we just didn't want to, um, you know, we were going around and picking up parks. So we there was a bunch of um, families that we just had a big list of the parks and we just, everybody picked a park and we went to different parks and we cleaned up the whole park area. And it, man, it's crazy. How, like, there, there's so many cigarette butts in parks. Oh yeah. It's, it was crazy. I was like, we could spend all day just picking up cigarette butts in a child's play area. I was like, wow, that is wow. crazy. Yeah. Trustees in County. I don't see doing any cleanup really anymore yeah. in, in communities yeah. it's like they used to and now they're just locked up in county you're locked up in county yeah That's oh man really crazy okay i gotta tell you okay it's a personal thing let me get some coffee real quick get some coffee <laughs> <laughs> you gotta grab any more coffee uh yeah a little bit more would be awesome yeah Hold up. Before we continue, we'd like to thank Pastor Dave from Fountain Springs Church for joining us on the podcast today. If you're enjoying what we do here at Black Hills Podcast, you can help keep us rolling by donating to the podcast with the links provided below. Or if you're a local business in the Black Hills area, you can sponsor an episode by contacting us by email. Thanks for listening. Keep it local. Keep it Black Hills. Let's continue. I don't know how people drink coffee so hot. I can never drink it like when I first get it. <laughs> I have to let it cool down for like yeah. a straight like five, five, ten minutes. Like, I'm with you. Yeah. No. I like to get an Americano and that thing is like boiling lava. Yeah. So I literally will get it. Like let's say we go on a, we're in the car. I get it just set in the cup holder and be like, I'll get to it later because it's just so hot. Oh, yeah. Sorry, everybody had to take a coffee break. It's good. Fix my contact. It was pretty intense. Ooh. All right. Anyway. Okay. We were talking about, uh, love week. Yeah. Love week. Uh, now, one thing, one thing we did with, with Love Week, uh, we start, I believe schools are the epicenter of a community, meaning there's just a lot of need, a lot of stuff goes on, and what, what happens in the school system, I think, affects a lot of things. I think we've even oh, learned, yeah. that, learned that in COVID. Well, uh, this is years back. Uh, the school system, one of the things we were notoriously known for in the school system was how uh, bad the buildings were, things were falling apart, things weren't really getting taken care of. And so we, we offered the schools, hey, can we help be involved in doing what you don't have the money to do or the desire to do? Uh, not that we had a bunch of money, but we had a bunch of volunteers who were like, hey, that's manpower. That's, And we began to have principals allow us to go down their list of, well, this needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And so we went into school buildings and painted hallways and classrooms, and we redid teacher workrooms. Teacher workrooms have to be one of the most depressing places in all of society. Because they get, they do not get money to say, yes, you can redo the teacher's work room. Oh, the lounge? Yes, the where lounge. They, oh, like, okay. right, like, where they eat and hang yeah, out and get like, a break away from the kids. Yeah, but yeah. if you've ever been in one of those, typically you're like, this is worse than, this is horrible. Depressing. <laughs> yeah. 
So we went in and said, well, nobody's going to touch that. We'll touch that. So we went in and, and started redoing school after school after school that would let us do it, uh, redo their workrooms. Because I think if, if a teacher feels valued, mm -hmm. well, that goes right into the classroom. Yeah. And so those kinds of things, I don't think churches should don't be the only ones doing them. But we as a church feel responsibility to not just be in this community, but we, I, here's what I, whether, whether you're religious or not, I want you to be so ticked off if we ever close our doors. I honestly want that. I, I, I want you That's to be love right there though. You know, dude, I want you, I want you to be calling David, what, what the frick you doing, man? What? Like, <laughs> I, I want you to be mad because I think we should be loving you and the people around you yeah. so well that that would upset. We don't have to agree on everything. But you have value, I have value. Let's live that way. And so, I, frankly, if you want to know, like, secret agenda of Fountain Springs Church, mm -hmm. um, we want to be valued. Uh, and so, and I want you to know that you're valued. So that involves me serving. We serve. I really dig how your guys' church isn't about, like, other churches are viewed, like, at a throne, you know? And you guys are just out there, like, with everybody else. Regular person teaching it at a whole different level. It's completely different than every other religion or every other church. You guys are still, you know, Christian, right? Yeah. There's, what is it, in California? <laughs> Obviously, it started yeah. in California. <laughs> but they got, a, they got a Christian church there that opened up. A pastor that's teaching, uh, what is it, the LGBTQ uh, progressive, uh, like, church. And it's just basically, um, he wants them to show up because anytime you go to church, you should show up 100% you to give yourself to Jesus, like as you, who you are hmm. all the time. And they say, they all say like the LGBTQ community say they can't show up because they can't be themselves in the church because oh. there's a lot of religious things and stuff like that, that, you know, they disagree with and stuff. And... Uh, this guy is just like I started this so they can just at least come to church gotcha. and be real and who they really are, regardless of their gender, uh, uh, sexual orientation, sexual orientation. But yeah, he's like shouldn't matter. And then they yeah. just come and that's it, and it's no big deal. But yeah, I mean, is that like are you guys like that? Larry? We we constantly will say over and over, uh, anyone and everyone is welcome. Anyone and everyone matters. Now, if you interpret that as though we have to agree on everything, then then, oh, yeah, yeah, then no, you won't yeah. feel you yeah. won't feel like you belong at our church. Yeah. So no, I mean there's but but I also I mean I have a favorite sports team and I mean we, yeah. don't, we don't have to agree. I'm just saying anyone and everyone matters. I can tell you this as pastor of the church for the last twelve years, I've never ever 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 told anyone to, that they're not welcome. Good. Good. Um, I've never we've never kicked someone out. We've never, I've never had a conversation with someone where we disagreed and it was like, well, you're not welcome. No, no, I just, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that's full disclosure. Mm -hmm. We've never done that. Good. Now, there have been people who have come who have heard me preach something from the Bible. They disagreed with my interpretation of it mm -hmm. and projected onto me that I didn't like them anymore and that I was against them. Oh. And, but didn't leave room for conversation for that. Yeah. But I will say, and you can attest to this. So yeah. I'm, Anyone and everyone has always been welcome, at least in the last 12 years. Oh, absolutely. A lot of times I pick up a lot from the sermons, but there's some times where, like, David will say certain things. I was like, I believe this, and he's saying it while he's preaching. And I was like, I don't agree with that, but this is, that's, it's, we're different people. We believe in certain different aspects of th certain things, and that's okay. The one thing that we always come together is Jesus. That's why we're here. That's what we're talking about. We're trying to talk about that and that's that's i guess what's always been a little bit different about it that's good i mean the more life continues to get more progressive we're all going to have more differences and more disagreements because everybody's manipulating everything and pulling everything apart so it's it's hard to get something right perfect all the time yeah. and i think that's what might be broken one of the major things that We've got to learn to disagree yes. oh, yeah. and exist in the same space. Yeah, there's oh, a yeah. lot of people that come on the podcast with I disagree with, but where where does it really get you? It's good to talk about it and learn about it, and then, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can learn more and then change it. Yeah, 
I mean, you have to talk things out and be able to do. be able to be okay with it at the end of the outcome. Like that's why I think we're always good friends because we we talk about stuff. We you just talk. We talked about religion. Sometimes we'd get into that. Yep. We'd talk about a lot of other things. We're like we're completely on opposite sides of what we think about it. At the end of the day, we're still going and having a drink. We're going going and having some food afterwards. It yeah. doesn't it, it doesn't matter that much to to create a divide between people every single time you have a difference. I really think you should not be divided if you have a disagreement. Yeah. Yeah, at all. I mean, I think that should be a bond more to talk mm-hmm. to somebody, to be more open to somebody, because these days it is hard to have a good friend that you can actually talk to and have a like a, a conversation with. Even if you're disagreeing, it's still in the realm of a conversation that you're having. A lot of people really aren't having conversations. See, I, I agree. I agree because yeah. uh, I'll have a sit down with someone, and all, and for some reason, it's the meeting gets set up where it's. Uh, I just want to make sure we agree on certain things. Like, like that's literally the, the the agenda of the meeting. That, that is an agenda when they say that. I just want to yeah. make sure we're all going to agree on this real quick. <laughs> Let me give you my points, right? And here I go. Yeah. Number one. I'm right. Number two, <laughs> this is a debate. Go for it. I know more than you. Number three, <laughs> I have more money than you. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, so like, that's what I would say, even on the positive, let's say you line up. Is that truly like the only reason to have a relationship with someone? Because, because yeah. well, we line up on everything. So well, we're, we're buds. Like People are doing that, though. Like that is a like we talk about cancel culture and stuff like that. And the way people line up, unless you line up with my ideas of something pats on the back you know they everybody wants yeah. a pat on the back like when somebody starts disagreeing with them they want that person to walk up pat him on the back and be like oh no he's right we yeah. don't care why we have no reason but we like this person more than you so we're just gonna pat him on the back like i don't yeah. even treat restaurants that way like i've had i've had horrible experiences at restaurants oh yeah me too hopefully not a yeah. I, actually i haven't there. okay it's been good. awesome good. but i'm just saying you know like <laughs> I don't know. I just, I think people deserve, and I'm not even saying a second chance, like multiple chances. I mean, we're not talking about you like punching me in the face every single day over and over and over Mm -hmm. again. I'm talking about, Hey, that didn't go well. Let's, let's give it another chance for it to go well. Or, or what can I learn from you? But no, I would love to see society be a little bit more grace filled. I think right now, um, not to get preachy, but they said, (laughs) But, but the Bible talks about how Jesus came with both grace and truth. And I think we have a problem with the and part. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. I think so, some I got buddies who are all grace and buddies that are all truth. And I think the beauty of what Jesus brought was and. And I would love relationships to have both. Like, hey, we can talk about what's true and what you think is true and all that. But that's also like grace. Grace mm-hmm. is, it, it, they, it's not one or the other. It's both and. And I would love, <laughs> I would love if, if. On my tombstone, it said he brought grace and truth. Cool. Underline and? There, there you go. There you go. I would love <laughs> Honestly, I would love that. I, would... I think in future, and this is just like a, a guess for me, but I think in the future, religion, once religion starts changing, with how every time culture changes, religion changes. So now there are more people getting mad that uh, some churches accept uh, brewery beer in them uh, because like I don't know if they say it's not mom and dad's religious way because uh, after some churches get done they go and they share a beer of this new local brewery and they get feedback and then they leave and stuff like that yeah. and it's I mean that to me makes sense <laughs> for sure <laughs> but yeah there's I mean there's pros and cons for sure but they're different ways churches are going to start doing their own thing and i think i think think in culture it's all going to start changing and then it's really going to start to divide i i think there's always like a culture shift in religions i guess if Uh you want to say that like um you try to change with the times as far as what's going on in the culture at that time i don't think necessarily changing um, the religious beliefs always change yeah but how it is uh how it's how it's given to people yeah. is really how the method yeah the method yeah. um but i think sometimes too churches do go a little overboard and do change too much with the culture too mm-hmm. um that could happen as well it can go the other way there's theology there's there's um code 
there's this is what we stand on but this is how we practice what we stand on the method behind that okay let's talk about beer yeah uh in the old days according to the western movies that i've seen <laughs> sponsored by <button. laughs> so that's according to the western movies i've seen if you wanted a beer yeah. you, you went to a saloon walked up to a bartender and you got your maybe beer but something else anyways so that's that's the western movies that's what they tell me right right whiskey whiskey so now though we were just talking about a local restaurant who no you go and serve yourself you you go up and put a thing a, a bracelet and shows up and you pour your own beer mm -hmm. that's a change in method mm -hmm. that's a change in, and I think that's okay. The methods will, I think, consistently change. Yeah. Music style will yeah. change and evolve. But um, in any end, it's still music, yeah. You yeah, still got it. Same. So what churches, what you'll see churches fight over and what you'll see disagreements in, you'll see them in both realms. What we decided as a church, let's not argue about method. Mm -hmm. uh, let's live on a code. Let's live by the code. But method can... I think it can change. <laughs> when I went to your guys' church, it was like a church. It was like a resort. A you, resort? Yeah, you walk in. Mimosa. We can do a mimosa. You got, <laughs> you got a lathe. And then you guys got your coffee shops yeah. and stuff and nice things. And and your guys' music setup is unreal. And how the dome and the sound is portrayed because it projects. Yeah. It is just it is phenomenal. That was really blown away. I was like, Andrew. He's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> music is one of the first reasons I was like blown away when I got there because we were way into music. And oh, oh I, yeah. I was like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> me and Andrew used to dabble in some tunes together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it, it's really good. And it's not that, excuse me, but it's not that ugly religious music. It's still really tasteful and good. Oh, it's like, it's. I was like, dude, these guys are awesome and he's like dude yeah they're really good they just played the other day weekend and they still the bands there the people that go there are part of the community they play yeah. local shows around oh, yeah. here what's funny is is uh what uh, in church sometimes music will get fought about right like what style mm -hmm. oh, yeah. what's funny is the style that a lot of people fight about was new at one point as well yeah <laughs> and, and they're not thinking like wait a minute i don't think i, I don't think jesus was actually singing this actual song no so yeah. so i think we've changed it and and even what we call traditional right now yeah. was not always traditional. Yeah, for sure. And so it's 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 kind of funny what we argue about because you're like, if you just were able to take a time machine back, you'd be the revolutionary. You'd, you'd yeah. be the one that people were like, why are you saying that? True. Okay, that was one thing was music mm -hmm. was a huge aspect yeah. of my life. And religion, I tried to get into the whole Wednesday's Christian thing. Uh, there was a church down in Sturgis. They had like a little skate park in the back and stuff like that. Oh. And they were they how they portrayed it towards the younger crowds, which was bigger. Uh, they were trying to get through a really good pastor, really awesome. Uh, we used to go hang out, but I was not just I don't know if it's me, my stubbornness. I just like I was like this isn't for me. You're stubborn for sure. <laughs> I am, <laughs> but the music was, okay. and I was really into three of my favorite metal bands when uh, the whole metal into like christian bands and stuff like that started okay, it was like yeah. august burns red oh, as, yeah. as i lay dying and under oath and they were like i mean this is early 2000s mid 2000s when it started and then i mean everybody was hardcore metal and it was being more accepted into the church and i was mm -hmm. like oh this is hip now cool. this is cool but it was still i don't know it wasn't I, it just, I don't know, it wasn't for me. But I really did like, like even now, still, I still listen to uh, metal bands that are religious. And my friends are like, you still like them? I'm like, yeah, I like, yeah, I don't care what religion it is. Like, we can all agree, it's good music. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's yeah. like, we may have differences, but in the end, it's good stuff. I've always loved that. I, that's like uh, kind of a heartfelt thing for me. I've always loved uh, the idea of a Christian metal band and being able to go around and do that. And... That was the, you know, when I said I was like scared to of first come to a church is because all the stuff, all the stigma and, you know, are they actually there for the people? Mm -hmm. And that was, that's 
really cool to see when I saw that when I saw uh, these metal bands going out literally into the people who are literally saying I hate everything about you and we write music about how much I hate about you <laughs> and they're like we're gonna go play music with these people and show them how we love them and we're gonna talk about our lyrics and we're gonna be and we're gonna go do this and we're gonna have a great time doing it and that was just that blew me away that was like going into the war zone and being like and waving the flag and be like hey i'm here to hang out guys <laughs> like what's up <laughs> you know it's so cool it is did yeah. i ever tell you i traveled with a band did you yeah who in in college a group of buddies uh they were called paradigm five so not a signed band but the drummer was like as motivated as any human could ever be and so here's what he's like here's what we're gonna do all summer i'm gonna book us gigs across the whole nation at every bar that will let us come play anything and then on on sundays we'd play at churches now i didn't play i was a sound guy i was the tech guy blah blah mm -hmm. blah uh but i was like let's do that so book to book book so no joke we're at the whiskey a go-go uh down set on sunset boulevard all, all that oh wow somehow he accidentally booked we got accidentally booked because there was another group that was going to get signed called paradigm they messed up on the booking <laughs> so no joke uh, a drag queen band plays and then these christian guys get up sorry i can picture it right now it was so awesome and so then we get up and the guys get up and and sing songs that had had some overtly christian lyrics to it like talking about jesus and yeah. stuff like that but no whole summer in bars uh sketchy places in detroit stuff like we're like hey don't turn right uh turn left we went there we have to turn right we have to go there like yeah. sketchy stuff yeah um but no man oh, whoops sorry. don't don't break stuff dude. i'm sorry man it's <laughs> no, still early okay. music i think music speaks to everybody i think so too and you got to pay attention I think that's to music it's I, not an irrelevant topic i think that's a good way for everybody to put their differences aside for a minute and just like mm -hmm. i mean if you enjoy it enjoy it just yeah i mean if you guys have any uh differences well just like outlooks and i mean you're going to a church you're kind of over i'm not religious but don't uh i mean it doesn't mean you have to be like that like if you really still do want to get into a church um and jesus check them out it's you're always welcome anyone's it, welcome yeah it's positivity it's like it's like a poetic quote book when you're up there seriously wow yeah that was wow what? <laughs> i'm not trying to kiss butt <laughs> here but for real it's it's like when you're around so many people a group of people with the same positive energy and you're doing your thing it's it's good like a really good feeling even for that little few hours out of your day when you're done it kind of does make you be a better person and then i'm pretty like it i'm sure it does spread throughout the community especially these days with all the negativity mm -hmm. we got going on in the mm -hmm. world it's good to have some sort of positivity in your life yeah yeah there's hope out there we there just don't, don't not everyone talks about it well, thanks for coming in. My pleasure, man. This is thanks, awesome. Thanks for being thanks here for and talking me. to us. Andrew, thanks for being here. Anytime, man. Yeah. Pastor Dave, am I still welcome back? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we can hang out anytime. Okay, anytime. Cool. All righty. Thanks, Black Kills. Take care, guys. Check them out. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.